Hi, I'm Christina. Welcome to The Void. We're here with the super excellent band Youth Code. Hi. Out from LA, how are you guys going today? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. So I want to talk about like soul music. Like yeah. soul, like soul is a funny word because it's like a soul is savage and it's bloody and you can like sell it or bear it, you know, it's not like polite or anything like that. And I think one of the cool things about Youth Code is it's a really soulful band. Like what do you, did you see it that way and what do you kind of see soul music as? Like what's music that like touches your soul when you like hear it or make it? Um, I mean, like, I have so many different facets of, like, thinking what speaks to me in, like, a, in a way where, I don't know if it's, like, soul or, like, songs that are attached to, like, just different feelings that you had at times when you've heard them or, like, different feelings that you've had, like, maybe you've seen a band or maybe a song was playing when you were, like, getting broken up with or, like, you know, just different things. Music has so many different facets that I think add into your soul and your everyday being and things like that. And I think with Youth Code, it was, like, we didn't really, when we started, like, it was not a thing that, like, we didn't really plan on being a band that, like, six years down the line would be, like, touring Australia and, like, Japan for the second time and, like, fucking, like, being at the level that we're at right now. And, like, as the band progressed, like, I mean, from the first demo, it was like, hey, Ryan, like, we have this band, LOL. And, like, he wrote two songs, he sang on two songs when we first started, and then I sang on two songs, and then when, like, the label was like, yeah, we'd love to put this out, I was like, oh, all right, cool, yeah, like, I guess I actually have to, like, write about real things. But it's cool, I've always really liked writing, so it's kind of this uh, ability to kind of dive into a side of myself that I never thought would see the public eye, really. You That's know? cool. Yeah. Like, okay, what about you, Ryan? What do you think is kind of, what is soul music to you? Um, I think, like Sarah said, like when we first started, we didn't really expect to be a band. It was just sort of a funny thing that we were going to do. And I'm into electronics, so that was what we did was electronic music. And as the band turned into an actual band and we had to do records, I like musically like I listen to like really like heavy or harsh like noisy stuff or I listen to very sad folk music and stuff so I think like having emotional parts w mixed with things that are harder and I think it drives the point home more yeah. there's more substance to it and with Sarah's writing too it just kind of worked together so I do I appreciate that you hear the soulfulness in. yeah well it's it's like a it's like commitment to complications is like a movie it's like a fucking heist movie like there's all these different scenes like i saw like initially it's kind of like this desert and then everyone like gets together and there's like a big crime and then you kind of get in a van i kind of saw it like a big black van kind of getting air like yeah. there's this bit in the and then it kind of distills back down to like you two yeah, I know it's it's kind of weird, that's but I sick, kind of though. like that's. I've never heard somebody say that about our record. It's kind of like a prolific thing. I always have like people be like, oh, I, you know, like I was really, really, really bummed, and like your records picked me up. Like I've never heard someone say like, oh yeah, it's sort of like a movie to me, and like there's different subplots between each song. That's yeah. fucking rad. How did you guys get into it? Like you were in a, you were like a band, put like you were a tour, touring like metal human for a long time. I, I'm How an all yeah. per, I'm an all species human, I, not just He's all the species. Yeah, there's a ton of different from music species that I sat beside in life. Uh, I don't know, I mean like, I've toured a bunch. Ryan's always been like music guy, and so like when we, well like he had like hella bands and he like is super talented and like when I met him he had like fucking all these insane synthesizers and like all these crazy guitars and he's like this fucking arty cool guy, like <laughs> babe, and I was like whoa, whoa. And then we like moved in together and then we started doing music and it was kind of like, I said that there was a band, but I didn't know how to write anything except for words. And so I just like fucking ripped around on stage and yelled about like fucking whatever's inside this dumbass brain of mine. <laughs> but you know, like I. You guys I, are a good counterpoint to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's so cool. Cause it's like hella intricate, but mad primal. It's like <laughs> you guys together. <laughs> You guys met at a concert, right? You met at like a cool band concert. I remember reading about this. At a teenager club. Easy. 
we for sure we did. Weren't, I was not there for the club. I was there for the band that was playing. I basically got told, hey, this dude I think you would like is in town and he's going to this club. And I was like, that club? That's a fucking teenager club. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go. I was like, I'll go meet a boy, whatever. Like, I was just like newly single and I was like, I fucking hate everything. I don't want any men unless I can kick them out in the morning with no dignity on their side. And so I like met him. Oh. Whatever, dude. I, I had like two weeks of being a hoe and I wasn't even hoe-ish because I met you and I was like, oh, I'm, yeah, I was like, I better cancel every boy's number in my phone. Oh, you guys. How about you, Ryan? What was the, what was the first thing that struck you about uh, young Sarah Taylor? Sarah, she was terrifying until I, I talked to her. I stared at him like I was a sex I was, predator I was for just about hanging five out, hours. Watching my friend's band and like socializing with people I haven't seen in a while, having drinks. And every time I'd look across the room, this girl was like this, <laughs> like this. There's a there's a look that I've uh, that has been you like a it? no. It's like a joke with friends of mine called looking down, looking up, where you sort of like give like vampire eyes at someone. And the photo is looking down, looking up. And I for sure stared at him from the back of the club. And John from Baroness was with me, and I was like, I think I'm gonna marry this dude. And he was like, Well, you have to fucking talk to him instead of stare at him all night. And I was like, No, dude, don't leave me alone. I don't want to talk to him. John was like, I'm gonna leave. I'm going back to my hotel. Talk to that dude. And I was like, uh, Yeah. And then we uh, talked, and she was really sweet. Yeah. Oh, you it, guys. Yeah. It was not what I expected. I think I talked about Earth Crisis and Depeche Mode in the same conversation to try uh, to impress me. You know, you could like. <laughs> you guys could totally play with the Earth Crisis or Depeche Mode, and that's why your band's awesome. Like, isn't that weird? I don't yeah. know if we could play with Depeche Mode yeah. because we would be bitching. Uh, pff, I think for us, maybe because like all of us like Depeche Mode and are like that band's sick, but like my vocals in comparison to like her personal Jesus, like it would be every single person in that crowd would be like, fuck off, I'm <laughs> going to get a beer right now. How's it's good? The first how, time we've had to deal with that. Yeah. How good is Ultra though? Ultra is my favorite Depeche Mode record, I think. It'll fuck, it'll fuck far. It reminds yeah. me of being really high in 16. And uh, just like, yeah. yeah, that record is so, so, so good. I think that that record to me was kind of like, I don't know, I, I appreciate what Depeche Mode has morphed into since like Exciter and like, you know, Playing the Angel and things like that. But Ultra is kind of this record. It's sort of like how Blood Flowers is with The Cure, right? Which is like my favorite Cure record, which I think is like a fucking hot take to some people. But it's sort of this stage at a band where they kind of just don't fucking care anymore. They're like, we've been through drug abuse. We've been through fucking members leaving, everything, like whatever. Here's this vulnerable, deep record. And both of those are like the fucking oh, oh, of, those, of those bands. And they're my favorite records by them. How about you? What What is your like moment? What is your favorite like record that is a, of a moment? What do you that mean is, of like, a moment? Like that. Those are my favorite yeah. records, but oh, by I, those artists, yeah, those like, are. I'm really bad with the favorite record, favorite band yeah, thing. It's because lame. I like. It's, when you're sad. I don't think it's lame, and I think it's good for some people, but like. What about of the Cure or Depeche Mode? Yeah. Oh, uh, the Cure would be uh, 17 Seconds or Faith, because I like dark, depressing, sad shit. And The Cure would, or Depeche Mode would be uh, Black Celebration. That's a good thing. Easily, yeah. Hmm. What, um, you already know this. We've, yeah, fucking, yeah, sure you we've argued She's about surprised. this. I, no, I just, but, like, every time he says it, I still have to go, hmm. But I do, I, you do, you have been to a Hall & Oates concert. And two of them. Can I just say Hall & Oates are fucking amazing live? Like, Hold on, though. No. Yeah. Listen, what? listen. Hold on, you yeah. calm it down. Dude, so the they first suck time I so saw Hall and Oates, no, them. shut it. The first time we saw Hall and Oates, or the first time I saw Hall and Oates, I was on tour with Boz Skaggs, which is so crazy. And then Hall and Oates were playing an off date at a casino in Buff or in uh, Niagara Falls. And so I went to the concert with two of the people in the crew for Boss Gags, and I was like headbanging the whole time. I was like, "This fucking rules!" And everyone's like, "Wine drunk, sixty-year-old mom is looking at me like, what is this crazy idiot doing here? Get this fucking tattooed mess out of the Hall and Oates show." And then I was like, "Dude, Hall and Oates is so sick. They were so sick live. I got the fucking set list. Like, I'm fucking amped." And then they played with Tears for Fears, and Which I was I like, "I had to go to because I love Tears You're for God. Fears." You're mad, goth. Let's oh, be God, real. They're so Such good. A good. 
yeah, yeah. And tears for fears are great but i was talking shit the whole time i was like all right dude mad world whatever hold on i was gonna blow them off the fucking stage and tears for fears came out and i was like oh my god they are smashing it oh my god it's crushing oh my god this is so sick and i was like well fuck hall and Oates have a lot to top right now and then hall and Oates came out and fucking so Daryl Hall was like, have you ever seen Be Beyond the Candelabra, that movie about Liberace? <laughs> that movie's incredible, by the way, but Rob Lowe has a scene as like, he's like, he's like so He's a plastic back. surgeon, and he's like He gets Matt Damon hooked on Super pills. high on pills all the time. <laughs> yeah. That he, was like the Hall & Oates concert. Yeah, so Rob Lowe, and Daryl Hall were like the same person. Daryl Hall's hair is all teased up. He has like these massive Gucci shades on that are sort of tinted. And he's like, all right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, he's yeah, a like rich girl. girl. Yeah, yeah, like I was whoa, like, whoa, dude. dude. And we were with our friend George and I was like, I'm so embarrassed right now. Like my dogs are blowing it. Oh, oh we gotta go. Like I was like embarrassed for that. It's like the drunk friend at the bar where you're like, oh dude, I gotta leave before like that comes down on me. Yeah. How did you initiate the idea of the band? Oh, I am, I'm a total fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, and I worked at a record store, uh, this place called Vacation Vinyl on Sunset Boulevard, or it was on Sunset Boulevard, it's moved. Uh, and so basically what happened was, I'd like just gotten the job there and I'd like told myself I'm quitting touring, I'm gonna work at a store, I fell in love and like all this stuff. And uh, they like were putting together all these, like this flyer for an employee showcase. And they asked me if I wanted to DJ. They were like, hey, do you want to DJ like the employee showcase? And I was like, what is it? And they're like, well, it's all of our bands playing. And I was like, my band's playing too. And they were like, I love that so much. you don't have a band. And I was like, yeah, I do. Put it on the flyer. It's called Youth Code. And then I went home. That is the greatest thing. Because we all. used to live down the street from where I worked. I walked home and I was like, yeah, uh, we have a band. <laughs> And Ryan was like, <laughs> greatest fucking band origin story in the history of time. It really is me just <laughs> being fuck. like too much of a prideful cunt to like, honestly, <laughs> like to not so, play. You're the in, you got a band. Yeah, I said it. I have a band. And that's what, that's what it was. But it kind of like there were sort of like it was it. It started that way. Like that's where the music came from. But like a week prior, our friend Gray that does this incredible label called Chondritic Sound. Him and his girlfriend, Catherine, used to come to our old apartment and we would cook dinners together. And so we'd like, you know, like have a couple drinks, go to the supermarket to get ingredients. And like, we kind of did that like age old thing where you like look at like different things in the market and you go, yeah, that's my band name. And he started a band called Pure Ground based on this game. They're unfortunately no longer around, but then we started Youth Code. But it was like this, ha ha ha, yeah, it's my band. That's my band, ah. And then when they said like, oh, what's your band called? Like thinking I was just taking the piss. I was like, uh, it's called Youth Code. Put it on there. Yeah. Fucking good name. That's Wait, all right. Was something in the I'm not going to talk about it. Code? I'm not going to talk about it. You don't have to. Yeah, there was, wasn't there? It was some fucking vegan ingredient, wasn't it? It was some fruity vegan ingredient. I'm a fruity vegan. It's fun. Same. Yeah. Same. Like, what did, she, what did you say when she said, oh, we have a band now? Yeah. I was you really angry? I, not like, I was like, you know, of course I was like, there was some excitement to it because I was like, whoa, okay, well, this is actually, we're doing this and I hadn't been doing a band for a minute. So I was like, okay. And I don't know, but it was really stressful because we were moving. And we just moved into Yeah, a new we apartment. moved into a new apartment. We were fucking broke for coming up the deposit and everything. Yeah. And I had sold like hella equipment to like help fund our move. And yeah. I had like, a drum machine, a sequencer. We had to like borrow like a No, sample. I got the sampler right before, I think, didn't Is I? Is that what it was? Yeah, because I had done the the last tour I was oh, supposed yeah, to do yeah. was I was touring with Behemoth. And I remember because you had sold a bunch of gear, mm -hmm. you always were telling me that the red version of the Electribe mm -hmm. was something that you really wanted because you had the blue one. Mm -hmm. So I remember like looking on Craigslist in every city and in the last day of the tour in San Francisco, I found this dude that came in like an Adidas tracksuit and I thought it was picture plane because there was a picture plane patch on it. <laughs> and this dude like, walked up and he was like yeah i got like four of these i only need one so like here you go and he sold it to me and then i brought it home and i gave it to you nice that, and that was the big the birth like well, i just knew that he wanted it so i got it for him but the the actual birth was when i came home and i was like haha band now yeah so we just how long did it take to write a song we only had five days yeah until I, the show. I just crammed it out i was just like okay well 
these are our influences. Let's talk about it really quick. What's it going to sound like? I like it. Let's just fucking do it. And we just did it. That's and awesome. the show was actually pretty good. We had an intro and three songs. There was a weird, there was like a weird like instrumental thing that we never released to. Yeah, that was the intro, right? No. What was it? There was, I, I mean, we never did it. That was like fucking six years ago. I don't remember. Did you get high fives at the shop the next day? Yeah. You get mad high five. It was a really weird thing because I remember we went to our friend's house for a barbecue. I hate God had played the night before we played our first. It was so show. fucking good. Uh, yeah, duh. The most duh. <laughs> uh, but they played the night before down the street from our house at this place called Los Globos. And we went to a barbecue before and we were meant to play the next day. And everyone's like, oh, you know, you guys are doing a band. And we're like, yeah, we do this band. It's like, you know, industrial. And people were like, whoa cool, where are you guys playing? And we were like, oh, this spot called Pear Space. It's like the vacation employee showcase. And everyone was like, all right, yeah, cool. And so, like, all of our friends showed up. Yeah. Oh, really? Randomly, really cool. all of our oh, friends yeah. showed up. So it packed out this room, and then we got off stage, and everyone was like, what the fuck? And, like, all of our buds were like, they had no idea. So it was, like, kind of a really magical moment. Yeah. It was cool, too, like... <laughs> There, I mean, in LA at, at the time, um, there was like, you're just starting to get like the beginning of like, it's pretty popular now, but the crossover of like industrial and techno. Yeah. And there was a lot of that just starting to happen. Yeah. And we also had like a really cool, like minimal synth scene where people were doing like really like Richie stripped shit. down, stripped down like synth pop stuff. And, and so that was happening. And, you know, people were getting into it, and then when we played, I mean, our music's a lot heavier now, but it was, like, super no. heavy compared to what was going on, and I don't think people, like, expected, like, us to be, like, chopping up samples, like, Ministry with, like, those, like, hard kick drums and, yeah. like... That's what I love about it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Like, no one was doing yeah. it, so I think it was kind of a shocker, and we literally got like booked that night to play another show and another show and then we flew to new york played this awesome industrial club and like Amazing. it just didn't it stop it didn't stop it was, yeah it was, it was like, crazy it was like just meant to be born i guess yeah kind yes. of meant to meet and meant to so what are you guys cooking up now like are you you've got another band don't you like a side band yeah it's like a punk rock band you like ped so you reveal things on instagram and then i bring them up on camera that's what happens <laughs> Me and yeah. some friends got together and started playing punk stuff. Cool. Yeah. But like I've like Fred, who's playing bass in it, he was playing in Chelsea Wolf on that tour. And so he played bass in Chelsea Wolf and he had played bass in Marilyn Manson previously. And like he I just love my life. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why I just knew. We're the same age. I was like, I have a feeling you'd be into Manson. Uh, just like a certain character. Yeah. Look, I was, we were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all cool. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, like Fred and I had talked about doing a band on the tour, but it was kind of one of those things where I was like, yeah, yeah, dude, if I can fit it, sure. It's like LA talk, you know what I mean? Everyone's like, oh yeah, let's do a band together. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool, bye. Uh, but with, I got Matt, I guess, piggy to people. Yeah. Matt and I used to, I don't know him as that. Yeah, yeah, That's the thing, yeah. I used to live with Matt. I lived in a house with Matt. Matt used to play in this band called Amen, and Amen was one of the first bands that I ever worked for. I lived in a house with like that second lineup, uh, Amen, or third lineup, I think. I lived in a house with them in the Valley, and it was like me, Casey, Rich, Luke, Scott, Matt, and we just kind of lived in this like gnarly house, and and, you know, whatever. That was yeah. like when I was 18 years old. So uh, Matt hit me up because some something happened with a friend of ours and, and we were just kind of discussing like the old days, you know, and like living in the house. And he was like, would you ever be willing to do a, a band? Like, I don't know. I feel like it would be super cool if we worked on something together. And I was like, I think I can like get us a band in about 15 minutes if you're down. I was like, what, how do you feel about Fred? And he was like, yeah, Fred's great. And I was like, okay, cool, let's get Fred. And then I introduced him to my friend Alex and Fred and Alex know each other. Uh, and I was like, uh, Alex is gonna play drums. He's friends with Fred, he's friends with me. So it was like, everyone knew each other. Everyone agreed to do it. And we've, we've already written like four or five songs. So Sick. 
Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. Does it have a name yet? Like I'm not revealing it. It's fine. Yeah, that's really exciting. You guys are doing. I'm confirming that it's a thing. Is like maybe the first time I've actually done it. I'm really thank. You. I'm really thankful that you have. I'm really thankful you're here. So what are you guys making next? Uh, we're making question. a new record. What movie would it be? What What's like if it was a movie? What would be the vibe? How far into it are you? Is it a happy film? No. no it's not. It's a, is it like a cartoon? Is it like a? Is Is it a fairy tale? No. no. It's, it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a lot. Uh, well, I don't want it's gonna be a lot heavier. It's gonna be a brutal. Oh. So you like started writing like lyrics and stuff, but you said you've written for a long time. Yeah. What did you like? When did you start writing? And what kind of when you were like, "Fuck, it's time to tell a story. This is a real band, and you're going to kind of take over that." What, what did you want to fucking talk about the most? Like, what, like, what's in your soul that you feel like you need to get out that no one else can? I'm sorry, that's kind of not like a small question, but that's a lot of things. I mean, there's so many different things that have just like. You know, I think everybody goes through their own life. And as opposed to like me answering this in a way where I directly state what I'm writing about, but I think there are so many different things that people see and experience that kind of leave these weird like, like when a bug hits the windscreen when you're driving down the road, I think that life is made up of all these like weird little things. And if you don't clean off the windshield, you can't see anything. So with songwriting, it was kind of like a way for me to just like kind of scrape things off and like clean up and and when each record has come out they have different songs where like i needed to get the things that i had that had collected onto like my life's windshield off off the thing you know? and now they're gone yeah they're probably still there <laughs> <laughs> but you made a really nice art with them yeah yeah, I, I did yeah. okay art with yeah. it yeah <laughs> how about you like what do you like what do you kind of want to get out here and how did like where did you come from being in like a hardcore band uh -huh. and coming through synthesizer land like how where did, yeah, where did you come from? I just did a line, but like, no, cool. yeah, you know, like. <laughs> you sort of got the Yeah, I just got, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking man, you're goth forever. Let's yeah. be real. I can yeah. dye my hair all I want. We'll always be, always be a goth, like, yeah. in my soul. Uh, youth code is, it's funny, like, yeah. I mean, to me, I've told this story before, but I'll do like a quick version. A um, quick version. I uh, was in a band with some friends. I was a total fuck up. I got kicked out of the band. I was pissed. I blamed them instead of myself. And while I was working my own shit out and figuring out, hey, maybe actually I am kind of to blame. Well, I need something to do. And I started a guitar. I'm gonna learn how to play guitar. I'm gonna write my own songs. I bought a drum machine. Drum machine had a sequencer, had a MIDI out. I plugged it into a keyboard and I said, holy shit, I can, make band. all this fucking music that I like. I didn't, I thought you had to have a computer for this stuff, which is another reason we don't have a computer on stage because I got into old equipment first. So I just messed with electronics for like years and Sick. I never had friends that made electronic music. All my friends wow. are like hardcore kids and stuff. So when I met Sarah and she basically forced me to start a band. Really? Did you like? I mean, just, I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not like I, she beat me into she, it. She may have been forceful, but I didn't, she was right. But forced in the way that I didn't want, I didn't play electronics because I wanted to be in a band mm -hmm. or put out records. I did it because it's like, uh, it's like a Zen thing for me. I like to sit in front of equipment and make rhythms and beats and whatever. And I just zone out. It's like meditation or something. That's awesome. And well, it, it's like it's really interesting. Like like heartbeats and stuff. Like if your heart starts beating like a pendulum, it means you're dying. Like our heartbeat is really irregular. Like an irregular heartbeat's a sign. That's of good like to know health. because my I have a regular heartbeat sometimes, oh. and oh, really? I figure I'm dead. Well, no, like apparently, right? It starts if it starts beating. I, I know this sounds really odd, mm. but I am coming back to what you just said. So I feel like it's like fucking human to like want to make irregular beats. It's like why I don't want to listen to dun 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 right, dun, dun, right. dun dun. I like it's yeah dude, that, yeah you do don't you? I like She's always music, yeah. Yeah. She's always clubbing to house music. Always just sometimes yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I listen to a lot of like Euro dance. It's <laughs> really funny. Yeah. All the time. It's good to have like a, all the colors and flavors, but that's that's really cool. It was like kind of um, like a healing process and a noodling process. Yeah, like, yeah. That's it, good. Yeah, it's just something I like to do. I haven't seen you guys live yet, but you like put a lot into it. You know, yeah. like, is that a big part of it? Like, is that absolutely? Yeah. I don't. I'm going like going for blood and like. Yeah, like it's, it's almost like we're two different bands from record to live. Two completely different bands yeah, because. Which we need to fix. But it's impossible. I think. Yeah. I think it's actually impossible because there is a strange animosity about our band live that is like you can't replicate it recorded. You have to see this like beast of a machine, you and I like fucking bleeding, sweat pouring down our faces, screaming, contorting our bodies. You can't put that on a record, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you just can't do it, but it's, it's difficult. Like the records, I'm proud of the way they sound, but the amount of times that I've had people come up to me and be like, mom, checked out your video on YouTube and it was like, whatevs, and then I saw you live and I was like, wow, it was great. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're too could you you're too cool for school fan voice is yeah, the yeah. fucking best that's like how they are they're all like that mm, yeah i fucking checked out a couple songs on spotify not really my thing you know <laughs> but then like i saw you and wow it really blew me away tons of energy <laughs> what's um what okay so like when you were first going out and making music what what are the things like your guilty pleasures of each other that you teased each other the most about are you kidding ryan and i don't like the same no, music he all. teases me all yeah, the time i mean we and I definitely tease. have what's bands the? that we like of course but <laughs> well, i mean pretty much everything that i listen to I she doesn't like it. And the, no, I and like it. I just same. have to make fun of it. Well, you I, actually I don't like, don't like anything you, no. that I listen to. <laughs> no, I don't. You're just ripping into him because it's fun. Okay, yeah. what, what's, the, what's, what's the biggest one? Okay, what's the best burn that you've each had on each other? Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to get thrown over under the train for some of the stuff I listen to. Yeah. So please don't it's do that. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you do <laughs> secret shame. Here's the thing. Uh. You listen to good music. It's just a type of music that makes me go like, oh, for fuck's sake, eat an ice cream, cheer up, idiot. <laughs> like that's a lot of the music you listen to. Yeah. And it's good, but like I don't want to fucking cry all day. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to do an air guitar solo in my fucking living room yeah. with the dog screaming at our feet. Like the first Marilyn Manson records, that were like the best teen angst things. <sighs> the yeah. first Manson record yeah. is not my favorite. No. What's it's your a favorite? Mechanical Animals yeah. really? all day. Yeah. That's interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it's like his Bowie record. That's a very good fucking point. Yeah, he like is from fucking space on so much cocaine, writing these like heartbreaker songs. He's like falling in love with Dita at the time. Like, oh, it's perfect record. Perfect record. <laughs> What's your take on it? I don't fuck with Manson. Yeah, you don't. No. <laughs> what do you? I'm fuck older. With? Yeah, like yeah. I was already like into like underground stuff. So when Manson came up, I was like, what a herb. <laughs> you know how I feel about him. I like that you like him, and I I respect it, and I think what he does is cool and. You know, but good this, job, this but is, it's yeah. not my thing. But this is why you're a good band, because you both come from such different places, yeah, yes. you know? Like, it's a really interesting thing. And you guys have, like, you f you play such interesting shows, like fucking Code Orange and, like, Chelsea Wolfe. And yeah. tell us about that tour. Like, was it amazing? Tour? Was the it, Chelsea like, amazing? Wolf tour? Yeah. If I, I've said this before in, like, a couple interviews, and I'll say it every day for the rest of my oh, life. If I could spend every single day of my life with maybe like a, you know how like at school you do like f like six months on and then a couple like weeks off or whatever. If it wasn't tiring to everyone else, I would spend every day with Chelsea Wolf. Like every day of your life? Well, like every touring cycle thing, like every record. I would do at least a tour or two every record. Yeah, they were great. What, what, what made you feel that way? That's a pretty big deal. Like, is it the way the shows are, the, who they are? Yeah. The shows were yeah. good. The shows were good. Like, I feel like, you know, our bands are, are, you know, 
incredibly different, but we sort of fall under this umbrella of like the new dark scene, right? Yeah. So like in our own ways. It's, yeah, it's, in our own ways. I'm so glad there's a new dark scene. Like that's one of the exciting things about like you kind of like obviously you hear it and you're like, oh, there's a bit of skinny poppy and there's like there's like tropes, like industrial tropes, mm -hmm. but it's so fucking different and new it's mm -hmm. like it's i'm really glad you exist oh, i'm just saying you. thank you thanks for existing yes. anyway uh, how did that feel like like how what do you describe was it hard to win the crowd over no. or was it easy no were we they in your fucking we vibe? had fans at those shows yeah we have like a we're our bands are very different but we have a huge crossover yeah yeah and i mean i don't know how it would be in europe but in the states it's like it just is what it is like there's certain bands that are are very different and like Sarah said there's like a new wave of dark artists coming out and you know the crossover is cool to me like I feel so strongly about it because not only did like both of our bands like laugh and have like the best like every single day was laughs even on like the days where everyone felt like maybe I'm so hungover I might die like everyone still sucked it up and laughed and did the best shows that they could do like every single fucking night and it was just, it was perfect. And like, I sang Vex with Chelsea every night, which oh, was like super awesome to do. And like, I don't know, like they, they're just such special people to me that like, if I could get away with it, I would tour with them at least once or twice a year. Right. What was the most meaningful thing they said to you after you played one night? What, them? Yeah. They didn't say anything meaningful. They are like shitheads like it's us. Just, yeah. just, is that, that's a real point, isn't it? Do you think the heavier the music, the nicer, nicer the people? No. I mean, I, I just think like, I don't think the music has really much to do with the people, you know? I think that it, I think all people that are creating art are fucked up in some way or another, but I think that you can either find like people that don't take themselves like too seriously crazy or people that like, you know, like it's all subjective, you know? Really? I'm excited to so see much. you guys get more brutal. And we're excited to see them live tonight because apparently it's even better than the record. And I fucking really like the record. Cool. So welcome to Australia Youth Code. Thank you, Thank so you for so sharing much. a bit of your story. You fucking rad. This is The Void. Thank you.